It's a December special, and I'm James from the Get Off My Lawn channel here to talk about DOSBox. Something most of you already know about. We've all been there. At a point in the past, you vaguely remember an old game that you, or a parent, or sibling, or friend used to play. Using the power of the internet, you track down the game and discover a way to acquire it. More than ready to launch yourself back into the heady days of 90s nostalgia soak goodness, you double click the executable and… if you're running Windows, this pops up. That's right, despite DOS being a Microsoft operating system, modern Windows doesn't support it. From XP onwards, the OS was no longer based on DOS, with almost all its functionality stripped out with additional releases. For shame. The problem is that you're not one of those people who happens to have a basement full of 90s computing parts in working order. Just your fancy new machine. Worthless for this task, despite all its bells and whistles. It's at this point that people tend to discover DOSBox. DOSBox is an emulator of an Intel x86 personal computer, running a rudimentary but functional DOS-like command prompt. It was released in 2002 and saved almost two decades worth of games from the scrap heap of history. More importantly though, DOSBox was released on a free and open source license, which means that the source code of the program is available and anyone can alter it in any way they see fit. Aside from a multitudinous number of DOS games getting digital re-releases and abandonware sites springing up to cover the rest, the result was that DOSBox ended up with multiple community versions, sporting all kinds of enhancements that hadn't been implemented into the official version for various reasons. DOSBox 0.74 was released in 2010. It's 2020 and we're now on 0.74-3. They're not exactly speedy with the updates these days. One of the reasons being that any new DOS games being made tend to run on DOSBox already. The unofficial enhanced builds of DOSBox are called SVN builds, which stands for subversion but doesn't mean substandard. The official DOSBox wiki lists a whopping 16 of them, but only seven of these are still being updated, and only four of those claim to be enhanced versions. DOSBox X is a truly enhanced DOSBox SVN build, a fork of the original project and one that prides itself on accuracy. It plans on being the complete DOS emulation package, with an absolute laundry list of improvements on the original. Go and check out the official site for a more detailed breakdown of what has been changed. It's also worth checking out the Pixel Amusement comparison video where Chris breaks down the more technical aspects of comparative emulation. The first thing you'll notice is that it has a handy GUI menu where you can configure settings, much like the influential but now obsolete DOSBox DAOM, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong. In previous versions of DOSBox, you had to dig into configuration files in order to get the right graphical settings like aspect ratio, scaling, render type and shader support. X has a native graphical configuration tool that bypasses this because it's the 20s and the end user shouldn't have to edit text files. The problem with this though is that it's moved from early 90s configuration standards to mid 90s configuration standards, with a Windows 3.1 style GUI for text entry and no drop down menus in sight. Well, except the drop downs built into the main menu, James, but those are for testing purposes in game and aren't persistent. The other frustration with DOSBox X is that there's no direct draw support. DDraw is my default output configuration in regular DOSBox, and Direct3D and OpenGL just aren't the same. My last gripe is that even though it's more accurate, it does come at a performance cost with games just not playing as well as they do on the original DOSBox. Console emulators have supported save states for decades now, and finally this feature is available for DOS emulation, with a hundred save slots and a handy menu to navigate through them all. Because I was set in my ways, I still use Demon Tools, 
because the original DOSBox image mounter is a pain. With the Windows version of DOSBox X, it will mount drives automatically if you try to go to a drive that isn't mounted by default. In addition to this, you can set which drives mount by default at startup just like a proper operating system. One of the features I was delighted to see added was PC-88 support. This machine was popular in Japan and a whole host of interesting titles were released for it, including re-releases that look and play nothing like their western counterparts. Just look at Might & Magic 2, that is not how I remember it. Like the original, DOSBox X will take a guess at what speed to run the virtual machine, but you also have more options to customise what it's trying to do under the hood. I could go on, but the gist is that your games will play well enough. But what about how they look and sound? Well, there's native support for MT32 and also general MIDI synthesis through sound fonts. So the music will be glorious if you're playing a supported title from the late 80s onwards. On the visual side of things, it also supports the aforementioned Direct 3D and improved shaders. Because of the emulation accuracy and various other tweaks, you can also install Windows 3.11, Windows 95 and even Windows 98 if you want. This opens up a whole host of future opportunities, like playing FIFA 98 or other titles from that era that are an absolute pain to get working on modern Windows systems. DOSBox X is just one of several forked and enhanced versions of DOSBox that have sprung up over the years, and one that I've employed in the past is the DOSBox Enhanced Community Edition. The Enhanced Community Edition is a patched version of DOSBox attempting to integrate a pile of new features into the original without updating the user interface like DAOM or DOSBox X, with an emphasis on improved sound emulation and native 3DFX support. In addition to this, it also sports better joystick support and button mapping, and much like our previous SVN, it can also run Windows without a hitch. The most interesting aspect of ECE is that it can use Q files to play back music in the place of Redbook Audio, for games that read their music directly from the CD. It's a useful upgrade to the original without going too far off the beaten path. And it's here that I give a big shout out to DOSBox Staging's developers, who I know have watched this channel in the past and have asked me to cover their version. Well guys, I finally got round to it! DOSBox Staging is confusingly titled, because it's not the staging version of DOSBox. The goal of DOSBox Staging differs from ECE and X. They're focused on gaming specifically, implementing a series of patches like the other two, but focusing on delivering the best DOS experience on modern hardware and operating systems. As a result, they're not overly interested in accuracy or speed, but striking a balance between the two, so that you can forget about the emulation and enjoy playing instead. In addition to the sound font support, cue sheet reading and pixel perfect graphics, Staging also has raw mouse input support to make mouse-driven games feel better. The long-term goal of staging is to modernise the code base of DOSBox and fix the messy patching that constitutes the current version with deep code review. What's interesting is that these DOSBox forks are in communication with each other and share features and fixes between the projects. It doesn't appear to be seen as a competition to become the new default DOSBox, but rather various different tailored versions of the same idea. Want to use DOS productivity software for some reason? DOSBox X has you covered. It's also great for demo scene games that won't work on regular DOSBox. Want a better version of DOSBox without a million changes? The Enhanced Community Edition is for you. Use DOSBox exclusively for gaming? Staging may well be your emulator of choice. There are all kinds of other versions of DOSBox too, like DOSBox Pure for RetroArch. Do any of these render DOSBox obsolete? Well, no. Plain old DOSBox is perfectly fine for most games, with a bit of text file tinkering, of course. Tired of text files? Well, in my next video, I'll be looking at all the nice shiny front ends you can use for DOSBox. There's never been a better time to emulate DOS. So get yourself a copy of DOSBox, sit yourself down, and try out some of the greatest games ever made, as they're now looking and sounding even better than when you first played them. One TIE fighter from Alpha, Beta, and Gamma squadrons will be out on patrol around Outpost D34.